All right. Welcome to another episode of Connect and Politic. We're here with a special guest. Please introduce yourself by telling us your name, where you're currently located, and your favorite snack. So my name is Aquaeus Kelly. I'm located in New Brunswick, New Jersey. My favorite snack right now, funny enough, is actually carrots um, wrapped in seaweed with hummus. <laughs> <laughs> Like, so uh, how did you how did you arrive at that like how that's did you... a, that's a great question so naturally i was born and raised on a plant-based diet right okay. so uh, i never ate meat i went through a phase of being vegetarian so like growing up um i went to i'm from staten island staten island new york went to i61 so growing up running around i used to get pizza and stuff like that and then when i was around 1920 I started to cut dairy back out of my diet. Wow. And then slowly I just started, you know, cutting things out. Like if you would have asked me this question five years ago, I would have said Cape Cod chips, uh, right? Yeah. But now I'm trying to cut out the chips, cut out the snacks and just be more mindful yeah. about what I'm consuming. So, um, wow. What, what was your, um, so as a child, what was your favorite food? As a child, I always liked pasta. Like even to the, like literally, I have a, a pot of water boiling right now, right? Just slowly so that after this, I'm gonna just eat pasta. It's quick, throwing some sauce, uh, you're good to go, man. What, what, uh, any special type of pasta? Not really. I mean, the pasta I have now is, um, I forget the name, but it's not, it's not like angel hair or linguine. It's more like noodles. Okay. So I have like, like noodles right now from Trader Joe's. Nice, nice. And is, is it, um, uh, are you gluten free? Is there wheat based or do you do rice noodles? They are like rice, brown rice, gluten free nice. noodles. Yeah. So what's your, so right now is pasta your favorite meal still? It's my favorite meal because it's a simple, convenient thing to make. Okay, but if, <laughs> okay, if you were to if you were to choose a complex favorite meal, I would still say it's something having to do with pasta. I see. I see. When you said you said you grew up um, with a plant based diet, like you you're you know as a kid. Yeah. Um, but you you never had a face that you consume non-plant-based food? Now nah, the only non-plant-based food cheese. I've ever consumed dairy-wise is, is cheese, right? So it's funny because I never ate eggs standalone, right? Meaning I've never boiled eggs or scrambled eggs. I've never, maybe once I've drank in like not even a full glass of milk, mm -hmm. but right, growing up, I never had that in my household. Yeah. And then when I went, got older, like naturally, I'm out and about, I have to eat something. Yeah. So I would eat snacks, I would eat cake, ice cream. So that has milk in it, yeah. dairy products in it, but those dairy products standalone, I would never consume. Yeah. Like I never came home and saw milk in my refrigerator. Like when growing up, it, was, it wasn't even almond milk back then. It was like eating soy, like soy milk, yeah. right? Um, so anyone who knows about the health food stores back in the day, like integral yoga in, in the city, um, like that's pretty much the environments that I grew up in. Wow. Like very like that's like, unique. Hippie, like Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. That's 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 different. That's unique. I like that. Um and, and you're uh you're continuing the tradition, essentially. I mean it really stuck with you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at look at how we see the world now, right? Like everyone is is more mindful and conscious about meditation, yoga, plant based dieting. So I'm literally seeing what I grew up in come to fruition, yep. and um, the the level of consciousness across society has began to rise. So. In my mind, it's like, why would I go the other way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm, I'm kind of seeing the evidence that what we were doing is 
um, helps towards a more progressive way of living. Yeah. 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 What's your fondest memory from childhood? So I, it's funny because I looked at a few of your interviews, right? So I cheated, I guess. Um, <laughs> and when you ask this question, I would have to say I was always very independent in that I never felt the need to be around other people. So I always stayed to myself and I just enjoyed building and creating. So building Legos is something that I was always into. I so as a child, I was always building Legos, drawing. I love to draw um, and put things together. Popsicle sticks. I remember creating a basketball hoop out of popsicle sticks. I still have a picture of. So just building, man. Do you have a... Um... Did you have any of the special Lego sets? I liked Lego Technics or Techniques, whatever whatever the technical name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really liked those. But when I was younger, it was just regular Legos. So literally, you know, whatever sets I would get from wherever, they would eventually just end up in a box somewhere. <laughs> and I would just build my own things with the Legos that I had. So just being resourceful, I always like building trucks, cars, stuff like that out of Legos, just things. I didn't really buy Legos to follow directions and look at what's on the box. I just wanted to put together whatever was in my mind. Yeah. So just create from scratch. And, and uh, what, do you, what do you miss about being a child? I don't miss anything, to be honest with you. Uh, I see, so, my approach to life can be considered somewhat unique. I tend not to fall into just the status quo or our traditional way of living, right? Of whatever we want, we, whatever we want to define that as, because I'm always someone to raise questions, right? Why do we do this? Does this even make sense anymore? I know it's a tradition, I know it's a culture, but should we be doing this anymore, right? So I've never been one to follow the crowd at all. And I feel that life naturally is about progression and evolution. So I'm not going to look back and, and miss anything. And sometimes that's hard because some, some people may ask like, hey, do you ever miss this or do you ever miss me? And it's like, Life, <laughs> life, life goes. Wrong. You know, you know what I mean. This, so, so you say when somebody asks you, "Do you miss me?" <laughs> Your response is like, <laughs> sometimes I, I might, I might not answer the question immediately. <laughs> that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Some people I miss though. Some people yeah, I, yeah. I may not miss, but so, so. Life. Were you, were you were you like this as a child? Like, do you when you recall your childhood? Do you remember being, you know, um, an inquisitive, yet you know, constantly questioning everything that's going on? So even if I didn't remember it, my family remembers it because I remember speaking to one of my aunts recently. She's like, "You were always inquisitive and asking questions." So I may not have remembered everything uh, the way I may have liked to, but then, you know, we have people around us who remind us, yeah. right? So I would say that. Yeah. What were you like in high school? In high school, so we would have to get into the story of high school now, right? So 2000, 2001, freshman year high school, going to St. Peter's Catholic School, all boys school in Staten Island. And I didn't want to be there, right? So I was very, I was, um, I didn't want to be there, but I made the best of it. So eventually, one of the few black kids there, so naturally gravitate towards other, other brothers there. So it might have been like four or five of us, right? And I was into sports at the time as well. So I was heavy into football. I've always been a Deion Sanders fan, Charles Woodson fan, nice. right? And I, I tried out for the football team, played for like one year. I didn't even play my freshman year because my mother didn't want me playing. 
that year. And like it was it was just a regular high school experience, nothing too crazy. I was laid back, played my position, got along well with with everyone, um, was respected by everyone. So I never really had any problems in high school. I was more of I was more like a pretty boy in high school, like waves, that kind of stuff. So yeah. So so if if you know you said you got along with why didn't you want to be there? Why didn't I? I wanted to go to Curtis, which was a public school. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to be at an all boys school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> high school. Who, who wants? Who wants to be in an all boys school in high school? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure it, that you know it was sold to you that you know this would be a great education, great opportunity. Nah, that was not sold to me at all because I I knew myself. I knew that I could get a great education wherever I decided to go. Yeah. You know, in fact, taking it a step back, in junior high school, I got accepted into a specialized like preparation program called MSI, wow. Math Science Institute. So it was for students in grades six to six and six to eight, primarily six and seven, uh, who want to prepare to um, take the test for specialized high schools in New York City, like Stuyvesant High School, um, Brooklyn Tech, Bronx Science, right? Mm -hmm. And I got into that program because in, in sixth grade, like I was just focused on wanting to get all A's, right? Because in fifth grade, when I went into sixth grade, I learned that I wasn't in honors classes and I was upset, I was mad that I wasn't in honors classes. So I wanted to prove to myself because I knew that I was worthy of being in honors classes. So I always had that mindset. I've always been extremely driven. Once I lock in on something, I lock in. And I locked in, got into that program, and I had a great opportunity. But once I was in the program, I didn't take it seriously, you know? So um, that's, that's kind of been like, a theme for me like tell me i can't do something and i'm gonna get it done so so you looked at going to that catholic school as almost like punishment in hindsight i know that my my mother specifically she just wanted to keep me out of trouble yeah. and any environments that can um compromise my my upbringing my formative years yeah. we'll say that <laughs> so so how, how do you think that that childhood helped groom you into the person you are today i think it played a very instrumental role in grooming me into who i am today like um moving here to piscataway i live in new brunswick now it's a town over from piscataway so moving to piscataway new jersey and technically December 2002, starting as a sophomore in high school in January, it, it was at first, again, a challenging experience moving from Staten Island, where I'm always out riding bikes, playing sports, to Piscataway, where there are no sidewalks and figuring out like, yo, what are we going to do, right? But eventually got to meet people, got to meet some friends, made friends. And again, in hindsight, it was the, a much better place to go to school and graduate from. Yeah. Much better environment. Yeah. And um, what would you say, did you, you, you grew up with uh, primarily your mom? Mother and father. Your mom. But my, my mother is very, um, in terms of upbringing and, and rules and decisions, she definitely played you know, more of uh, that leadership role but my father was a, is around as well so yeah. yeah so what would you say is some of the most important lessons you learned from both of them so i take from both parents being that my mother's a social worker by trade retired new york city public school new york city board of education she's also a psychotherapist she's into metaphysics and astrology so that that gives us a little sense of 
the woman she is. And my father is a musician. So he's written songs for Isley Brothers. He's had records sampled by Common, 50 Cent. So when you put both of them together and look at my trajectory and really anyone who knows who I am or gets to know who I am, they'll see why that makes sense. Currently, I'm a teacher, so I'm an educator myself. And I went through my phase of, of working in music. Um, I have songs that I've written, never been published, but I went through that phase of producing, writing songs. Um, I've always been inspired by guys like Pharrell, Neptunes. So I went through several different phases in, in my life thus far. And I'm just getting into a place where I've, I feel like I'm carving out what I believe is, is my calling. So they, they both have played a, a very instrumental role in my development. Nice, nice. What, what are your favorite things to do for self-care? Um, that's a, a great question, right? So I am a workaholic, hands down. I, I recently started to work out consistently. So I would say the best thing that I personally can do for self-care is get sleep because when I'm not sleeping, I'm working, to be honest with you. Wow. So that's my definition of self-care is rest. Yeah. Yeah. And did you say you've, you've recently started to take it more seriously or? Working you, out? No, well, no, it's, uh, getting rest. Um, I try my best. <laughs> Try my best, yeah. Yeah, is it um, is it difficult to get rest, uh, or is it just you have so so many things going on and you're so busy that you forget to to actually rest? Is it difficult in what way? When you say difficult, meaning you know, for some people, some people have a um, either physical. Um, like insomnia, for for example. Some people have insomnia. Some people have, you know, some cognitive uh, uh, issues that, you know, one may prevent them from from getting rest, but two, they don't feel. So there's a disconnect between how much rest they feel they need and how much mm -hmm. rest they actually need, and so they rest less or they sleep less than. Uh, they actually, their body actually needs. And so there's this, you know, their groggery, you know, they're not the fully themselves. Um, so for you, which one, you know, or is it just, you're just so busy that you just like, you know what, I need to sleep. I, I am. So the term busy, right? And we spoke about this a little before where I'm gonna flip it back and forth a little. So when I hear the term busy, I've never really been a fan of that. And, and I like, to say that when we're, we're busy, we occupy time, right? We may not be productive. When we're productive, we optimize time. We yeah. try to optimize it as best as we can. So I always make an effort, right? I don't want to say try because that's another thing that I, I, I don't want to put in my vocabulary. So I always make an effort to be as productive as I can. So typically at this time right now, 8.29 p.m., even on a Friday, I'm kind of winding down, right? I'm powering down. So that's a conscious effort. Like once eight hits, it's like, yo, it's time to power down. It's dark outside. Like these are my most productive hours, right? <laughs> once it gets dark, there's only but so much that could happen, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I might as well, in order for me to best optimize my time, I might as well wake up early in the morning get ahead of the day, prepare for the day, right? Kobe, Kobe style, 4 a.m. workout, like get up early. Therefore, I can optimize and get more hours out of my day and be productive as opposed to doing something else. So that's my take on it. And I believe that a typical day, I don't have problems going to sleep. Um, you know, I, I did what I had to do, got my work in, it's time to get rest. Of course, some days we're not gonna do everything. So falling asleep usually isn't a problem for me, thankfully. So I don't suffer from anything that would prevent me from sleeping, thankfully. What are, what are some things you do for self-growth? 
everything I do is self self growth, like naturally, like when I'm up, right, getting ready for the day, I have a podcast plan, right? I have a motivational video plan, right? I'll be listening to someone speaking on a panel, you know, um, Bazoma St. John, for example, who was a CMO at Netflix. So I always have something that I can be doing, listening to a podcast, right? So I'm doing as I'm doing, mm. as I'm cooking, I could be listening to something. So that's, that's an example of how, uh, how I optimize my time. Again, yeah. when I'm in the shower, listening to something, you know? And I go through phases, like I may be hitting that phase again, usually around this time of year, November, December. It's like, I don't wanna absorb too much. It's, it's time for me to clear my mind, gain a sense of clarity going into the new year. So generally around this time of year, I'm not absorbing as much. So we'll, we'll see how that goes heading into November, December. So, so you mentioned, you know, you mentioned podcasts a, a number of times. What are um, your, your top two either favorite or most impactful uh, podcasts that you listen to? So most impactful, I would say Lewis Howe, School of Greatness. That's what really introduced me to the world of podcasts. This was back in 2014. I think he's over 500 episodes deep now. I remember coming across him before he even hit 100. Um, and I came across him through Scooter Braun, meaning that, I don't know if you know who Scooter Braun is, but he manages or used to manage Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing some research. I, I saw that Scooter Braun was interviewed by him. So after listening to that interview, I'm like, this was a really in-depth interview. So I started following Lewis. And then from there, of course, I'm introduced to the other people he interviews. And that's just how the game works. Nice. So definitely School of Greatness, Rich Roll, um, the Rich Roll podcast. So he's into sports, um, health. He interviews, he has long form interviews, sometimes like two, two and a half hour interviews. And he hits on a, a lot of things, has a lot of great guests. Recently, Finding Mastery is another podcast, Dr. Michael Gervais. He, who's a sports psychologist, works with the Seattle Seahawks and Pete Carroll. So for me, podcasts just helps me to bring my interests together, like sports, performance, um, culture, music, business, entrepreneurship, all those things I'm into. Yeah. So you mentioned something which I want to do a, you know, a double tap on, which is you listen. I've been hearing that term a lot, double tap. The double tap. Uh, yeah, so, you know, in, in, I mean, it's, I think the genesis of it is, um, I mean, we're going on a tangent, but the genesis of it is in software development. Um, you know, so, so that slogan or jargon just comes from there. And yeah. since a lot of those guys and girls are also influencing culture, it becomes yeah. this part of um, but yeah, so you mentioned listening, you know, you said uh, one of the podcasts was like two and a half hours. It was long form, right? Yeah. And, and so what are your, I mean, if you have any techniques or strategies, I, I think it would be helpful for folks to, to learn on how you, one, reduce distractions enough to be able to listen or consume a two hour long discussion or, yeah. you know, and, and that kind of stuff. So how, like, you know, how, how do you reduce distractions? And, and, and then if you have any strategies or tactics that you use uh, as you're listening? Well, it all depends on our lifestyle. Like right now I'm single. I don't have a girlfriend or a wife, right? So whether or not we want to admit it, being in a relationship requires time and effort. So that's, that's, a uh, area of, of friction that right now I don't I don't have right so that that frees up time so let's say I wake up at 4 a.m. right meditate 10 minutes for 10 as I'm brushing my teeth getting ready for the for the day I pop on a podcast right um, 
I may keep that podcast on as I'm working out. So already, let's say that's an hour 15. I come back, um, take a shower, right? Keep that podcast going. After the shower, I eat. That's it. That's how I do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I take the things that I have to do, eat, shower, work out, and then mix that with the things that I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I, that's how I manage the time. It's dope. It's dope. What do you, if you were to write a book, what would it be about? So I have four areas right now, literally in my phone for books that eventually I feel will be published. So I'll focus on areas. So one would be about education. One would be about the world, making the world a better place, right? Uh, another would, would be about branding. And the first one would be more personal. And it would, it would actually focus on a mindful approach to, to, to life, you know? Mm. So, so, so mindfulness, education, the world and Brandon. What, what, um, what's your take on Brandon? Like, and what, what, when you say Brandon, are you yeah. talking about personal Brandon? Are you talking about, you know, building brand equity in a, for a company? What do you? So building brands. So I'm passionate about building brands, passionate about empowering communities, passionate about uplifting humanity, right? So this doesn't come out of left field. So I might have to um, take it back a few years to the, the inception, the genesis, as you just mentioned. 2010, this was when I was into music, watching a video on YouTube by a guy named Brian Michael Cox. I think it was called Studio Exposed, behind the scenes, just guys in the studio making music. Anyone who's not familiar with B. Cox, he's worked with Mariah Carey, uh, Mary J. Blige, JD, Jermaine Dupri. So he's a very well-known producer. And at the end of that video, he directed everyone who's watching the video to Twitter, because that's what they do back in back 2009, 2010, right? Yeah. And I checked out his Twitter, and his Twitter said, a lover of all things that is love. As soon as I heard that, the phrase, a lover's ambition, came to mind. So that stuck with me. I'm like, I love this name. What am I going to do with it? So the first thing I did was I got a Tumblr, a loversambition.tumblr.com. And I just started using that as a destination, a platform for me to start sharing my interests. So at the time, it's like cars, photos, sports figures, again, like MJ, Dion fashion, just things I was into, right? And shortly after I got into photography, moved to Miami. I was working in, in a nonprofit program called City Air Miami, which is an educational nonprofit. So it's like all of, all of my interests, all of these worlds are coming together. And that's when I started to get into marketing and promotion, doing street team work, working on campaigns with a company called Cornerstone Agency. So seeing that world and how that world works, I was always just amazed by what goes into marketing and how marketing always intrigues people. Design, creative, like what is it that makes people resonate with one thing over the next thing? What makes this look dope as opposed to this, right? So that's what took me from music, from the creative songwriting production aspect to wanting to learn more about what goes behind the companies that we see every day. And that's when I decided that I wanted to, to start to use a lover's ambition as a platform to create something for myself where I can help other people to get to where they would like to be in life and, and build their brand essentially. So when I think of branding, I think of it as building our platform, building our presence based on our story. We all have a story. 
We all have a narrative. It's about knowing how to communicate that narrative and story in ways that resonate with people to entertain, inspire, educate, whatever it is we're looking to do, that's what we can use our platform and presence and brand to do. So that's what I'm about. So uh, a lover's ambition is a, is a currently, is it a, a branding consultant agency? Yeah, currently that's pretty much what it is. There's still a lot of stuff, a lot of questions unanswered, right? Um, and I'm not quite sure what it will be five years from now, 10 years from now, but in terms of the work I'm doing to date, a lover's ambition is the flagship for whatever projects I'm involved in. So right now I do a lot of work with Driven Society, right? And we, we do conferences, you know, we, we work with companies like Cadillac. We did a dinner last year, um, podcast, Driven Society podcast. So a lot of the work that I do now is in the space that I wanted to be in three, four years ago, yeah. right? So I'm definitely in a good space. So how, if, um, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, how would they uh, reach you? I'm a very easy guy to get in touch with. I'm on Instagram, have a YouTube channel, first name, Adequaeus on Twitter, A-Q-U-A-U-S, Adequaeus on Instagram. Getting in touch with me is probably one of the easiest things anyone can do. Nice, nice. Yeah. So what do you do, you know, you alluded to, to being an educator um, yep. earlier. So what do you do in your professional life? And is it any different than what you dream about doing as a kid? I never thought that I would be a teacher. I'm a fifth grade teacher now, right? And my entry into teaching goes back to when I decided to move to Miami. I wanted something that was, I wanted to engage in a type of work that I knew could be impactful. That's what I wanted to do. And in 2011, graduated from Rutgers, went to Rutgers University. My degree is in communication. And after I graduated, I was still working at Home Depot. And this was around like March, April. Internally, I felt that I needed more. And about a month later in May, I received just a random email that said, hey, are you looking to change the world and be a part of something um, where you can help people out and, and volunteer? So one of those like Peace Corps type emails, but this was from City Year. So it's an America program. I looked into it. I fell in love with it and I applied immediately. It's almost like literally a message from, from God hit my inbox and I acted on it, you know? I acted on it. I took immediate action and I applied. I thought about going to either LA or Miami, but in April, I went out to LA for ASCAP Music Expo. So I'm like, I've been to LA. I've never been to Miami. Miami's a little bit warmer. Let me give it a shot. So that's what got me out to Miami. Once I was out there, I loved it. Like being in school, I was at Miami Edison Senior High School during the school day. On weekends, we were volunteering and just literally like we were going in, like literally racking up volunteer hours. Sometimes there were seven days, like every day in a week we were doing something. When we weren't in school, activity after school, tutoring. Weekends, we were working with middle school students at the office downtown Miami. Sunday, we might have went to a, a parade where the superintendent was, was taking part in. So I love the experience. Plus I mentioned before I was into photography, like my time in Miami has yielded like over 5,000 photos that I still have on a hard drive somewhere. So it was a great experience. Nice, nice, nice. So um, do you remember what you dreamed about doing as a kid? Yeah, as a, as a kid, I wanted to be a construction worker. So that's right? one of those Lego buildings. Yeah, this goes back to building. <laughs> like, and, and it'll come full circle, because even when we look at what I'm doing now, essentially, I'm, I'm building brands. I'm helping to build brands, like strategize, connect, connecting people, connecting dots, 
creating partnerships, identifying what company's doing what, who's the founder of this company, you know, where are some white spaces, where are some gaps? Like I'm, I'm all in, man. So it literally came around full circle. Grew up into building Legos, wanting to be a construction worker, architect, engineer. From there, got into sports, right? Dion fan, Charles Woodson fan. From there, got into music. Rel fan, Neptune's fan. From there, just started learning about like marketing agencies, creative agencies, and literally step by step, that's what has made me who I am today. Nice, nice. Do you have anything on your bucket list to learn or do? On my bucket list, ideally, I would like to learn at least Spanish, another language. Um, this year for me was supposed to be at least mentally more of a travel year, but of course that that has been postponed. Yeah. And I would love to learn how to code and, and build programs and things of that nature. I would love to learn more about design, graphic design, um, product design, product management. Like literally, I wanna be in a position where if I have an idea, I'm equipped to execute it. Where I don't have to make too many phone calls because I can't execute it, right? So I feel the only thing hindering me from doing that is learning about design, learning about coding, computer science, computer programming. Because once I know that, I can take any idea and at least create a prototype, a concept, right? So that's that's what I'm about. So what what are your um so where are you all, where are you in the journey, in your learning journey with all those things? Are you taking classes? Are you, you know, using YouTube? uh university yeah so right now because of how many things i have going on that's not at the top of my agenda and and thankfully you know there are other things that are just as important um, that are at the top like i would say right now in terms of my talents and skills and, and gifts it's more within the realm of media, speaking, interviewing, really getting to know people, getting to know their story. That's where I'm at right now. So, you know, my priority at the moment is content, right? I have a bunch of content I haven't even put out yet. Videos I haven't even put out yet. So I need to get that, that off my chest. <laughs> Once I get that off, I could bring some other things in then I'll put my head down and, and get into those other realms of focusing on bringing on those other skills, yeah. skill you sets. You mentioned uh, when to travel or your plan was to, you know, get more traveling in this year. What are your, you know, what are some of your top spots? So last year around this time, I was getting ready to go to Bermuda. I, I want to hit the UK, right? Um, Africa, not sure which, which countries in Africa yet. But even with travel, I like to travel for business. I get things done, right? I'm not really the one to travel just for the sake of vacation. Like when I travel, I also want to get things done. So I like to meet people in different destinations and get things done. And then while I'm getting things done, I'll have fun naturally because I'm out there. So yeah. I like to mix business and pleasure. Nice. Uh, is there anything you want to unlearn? Anything I want to unlearn? That's a phenomenal question. Nothing comes to mind right now. Um, but there is a, a quote that comes to mind that I often live by. And I would say that a, a true test of our ability to learn is our, you know, willingness to unlearn what it is we, we thought we knew, right? Mm -hmm. So anything I feel I need to unlearn, I'll just unlearn it. <laughs> That's probably why nothing comes to mind because I unlearned it already. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, that's dope. Um, have you learned anything recently that change your perspective on a subject, product, or idea? 
for some reason, I don't know why this comes to mind, but I think of the debate last night. Like, I'm kind of learning that there are a lot of, there's a lot of conflict in this world, right? I'm learning that there's a lot of division in this world. And I know in my heart, it doesn't have to be like this. When we really look at the essence of humanity and how we all breathe the same air, right? For the most part, at least. And we can, we are smart enough to learn how to get along or at least learn how to live with one another. We don't have to be around one another all the time, mm-hmm. but that's, that's one thing that, that's been on my mind. And when you asked that question, for some reason, I thought of the debate and how, how foolish it, it looks at times. So that's what comes to mind. Yeah. Any advice for your younger self? Well, my, young, my younger self is no, no longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, that, you, that you, would, you would give your younger yeah, self, right? Yeah, you I right? got you. Yeah. Um, man, when, when it comes to that question, I feel that what, what, I've done, what I've done to date has got me to where I am. And I don't have any regrets in regards to where I am right? Even some of the stuff we spoke about earlier, like me not taking advantage of certain situations, like perfect example is junior high school. I spoke about the program I was in preparing to go to Stuyvesant High School. Should I have been accepted into Stuyvesant High School, I would have been a freshman in September of 2001, right? So September 11th, 2001, we know exactly what happened. Stuyvesant High School is pretty much right across the street from the World Trade Center. So that's a very tangible example of what I mean by I, I generally don't look back and, and question my, my decisions. Because even when I feel I made the wrong decision, it's an opportunity for me to step up right? A true sense of character, integrity is, yo, I messed up, but this is what I learned from it. And this is why I am who I am today. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true, true. What's the best advice you receive about money? About money? One thing that comes to mind, just capital gains, man. Capital gains. Like, when we look at the millionaires, billionaires, right? It's, it's creating assets, right? It's more than wages and salary. It's capital gains. So turning whatever it is we do, right? Make a salary, earn a wage. We have to get to a point where we can create assets and use our money to create money, essentially. Different people do it in different ways. A lot of people do real estate. Myself, I like to invest in in people, essentially. So that's why I'm in the realm that I'm in. Like, I would love to invest in talent. I still love working with artists. And I'm I'm really not too far from that in the work that I'm doing now. So when we look at, like, CAA, Creative Artist Agency, and Endeavor, um, WWME, William Morris Endeavor, like, those are agencies that were built like late 1800s, I believe, WME possibly, and 1900s. So we're in a new day, a new age, a new creative economy. So that's really where I'm playing right now is I wanna be someone who is well equipped at equitably investing in people and talent, right? Yeah. Businesses. So that's, that's what I'm into. Nice. What has been the toughest thing you've had to tackle and will help you get through it? Toughest thing I've had to tackle? Um, it's an- another, so I would say becoming a teacher, possibly making the decision to become a teacher, but 
it took me a while to pass the praxis exam. So it got to a point where I told myself, I'm going to just keep taking it until I pass it. So that's what I kind of call like just that gorilla kind of mentality where it's like, I'm going to just keep taking it, keep hitting it yeah. until I pass. It and, got to a point where I'm like, I'm not even going to study anymore. I'm going to just keep taking it. Just reps. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just reps. <laughs> Eventually I'm going to pass. <laughs> and and so so the way it is, is you, you have unlimited, you can just take it as many times as. as well, you're paying every time you take it. Oh, so yeah, you can take it as many times as you want. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's tough. And, and it's funny because it, I took it the first time and I passed. So I had to take four subjects, science, math, social studies, ELA. So first time I took it, I, I passed like two out of the four, right? I took it again. I passed three out of the four. So I only had one left. And then that's when the requirements changed for the entire test. So I had to take everything over again. So I had to keep jumping through hoops, right? So that was a challenge. But again, it told me how much mental strength and fortitude gets you wherever you need to go. Because whenever we get to a point where it's like, yo, I'm going to just do this no matter what, the only thing that can really stop us is like death or sickness. That's it. That's really it. Wow, yeah, I know that's you have to stay focused. That's, yeah, that's a deep level of focus. Um, are there any character traits that you admire in others? Absolutely, I admire intelligence, someone who's respectful, understanding, compassionate. I love people who are ambitious, right? Um, devoted, people who are tenacious about what it is they want to do. I would say a lot of the character traits I admire are character traits that I see in the people I admire. So again, back to Kobe, right? Just discipline, like straight, maniacal focus, right? And he was, he was motivated by guys like MJ. So I always look at people I resonate with and then try to study who they study and then try to study who they study. And this is how I just connect the dots. Nice, nice. So I, I take it the red flags that you try to stay away from are just the the inverse of everything you you're attracted to. Pretty much, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right. For a fun question, uh, what would you do if you won the lottery tomorrow? If I won the lottery tomorrow, I would not do anything until I am set on what I feel I really need to do. So I would literally just meditate in a way on what the first move should be with that, that capital. Nice. That's different. Yeah. That's a, that's a yeah. nice, nice. I'm sure like long-term, let's say within a few months, mm -hmm. I would be investing in some sort of company, right? Um, I would probably spend a lot of the money in just managing my day to day. So I'm good, pay rent, you know, purchase a property, something that makes sense, right? Pay off debt, of course, that's number one. So to go back, I'll pay off debt. <laughs> and, uh, and even with that, I would still have a lot of money left because I'm not even, I'm not even six figures of debt, right? right? So that's relatively low considering, you know, winning the lottery, at yeah. least. Yeah. So pay off debt, I'll be good. This gives me time to think. I don't have to work. So I'm all about intellectual capital. So now I have time to think. Now I can create. So this goes back to the books, right? If I want to create a book, create a product, now I have the time to do so. So I could create that, have that out there on the market. So that's making me money now. And I still have money, yeah. right? So just slow, strategic movements. Got it, got it. Yeah. Learn about investing, learn about VC, right? Become an accredited invest investor. That's like at least 200000 a year you have to be making. Okay, yeah. right? So I'll learn about that world. 
And then from there, that will guide me to, all right, this is where I should put my money. This is where I should put my money. And that would be my approach. Nice, nice. Is there anyone you would like to thank or express your appreciation for that you haven't had the chance to yet? That I haven't had the chance to yet? Yeah. Not including my parents? Because that that's usually, of course, first. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, the, the, the reason I even pose this question is because we, we tend, actually, I notice that, um, like, when someone passes, right, yeah. everyone will talk about, man, you know, so, so, so great, et cetera. And, and then, inevitably, someone in the, the group would say how, you know, we should, we should uh, give them the roses while they can smell it. Yeah. This, but but we only do this in the absence of the person, right? And so, and, and for me, it was, you know, I was always just um, perplexed by this because, I, you know, I mean, you know, I don't have a problem acknowledging people and, and, and telling people things, et cetera. But for some reason, I noticed, like, a lot of us don't. Um, and so, you know, I really... I said, you know what, I'll use this as a platform and, and it helps immortalize it as well, right? So, you know, for some folks, they've um, they've acknowledged people that the, the, and that's the other part of this is like a lot of times you don't know who you're impacting, yeah. right? So the person that's been extremely impactful to you outside of your parents or direct family may be somebody, you know, that may not even know, and then you forward this video to them, you know, the recording, and it makes their life, you know, you know, it's, it's just like, wow, that was, you know, I had no idea, I really changed the directory of this person's life. And so that's why, um, you know, I included this uh, question in the conversation. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the people I would think are people that I have things. So of course my parents, mother, father, I would definitely, and I told her this as well. Thank the principal who hired me, who gave me a shot, um, Georgette Gonzalez Lugo. So I, I've I've always told her thank you for for giving me the opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean those those are the people who come to mind. I'm sure I would thank a lot of other people, but like what you said, whenever someone crosses my mind, I, I at least want to check in on them. Like so, when someone crosses my mind. I'll shoot them a text, make a phone call, and just just let them know. Also, like when I come across something that I feel they're interested in, or I remember in conversations we had, like I remember Mike said he liked this. Yeah. I just came across this, like, yo, you should check out this restaurant. Or like, I was at this restaurant, I just thought of you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Stuff like that. No, that's that's yeah. That's it. I mean, that's that's actually, you know, what I do and and folks find it um uh, they love it, you know, uh, but they also find it interesting, you know, because it's like, wow, like you remember it, you know, like and it, it could have been like a three year ago thing or whatever. We had a restaurant. Um, and so, yeah, no, that's a, that's a real good practice. Yeah. All right. For our final question, how do you define success? How do I define success? So I believe that success is something that, as you mentioned, we, we decide to define, right? So everyone's definition of success is different. My definition of success is something that always moves, to be honest with you. Because what I may feel is successful today um, becomes different the next day because I achieved it, yeah. right? So success to me is a moving target that we're always after, I'm always after, but I see success as a moving target. And that's why I love the game so much. The game of life, you know, again, back to sports. Like, once we learn to love this game, we really can't lose, you know, long term. We have ups and downs, but knowing, appreciating the downs, imagine what we can do with the ups when we appreciate the downs. So whenever you see a person who appreciates the downs, keep that person around because <laughs> <laughs> when things are up, they're the right person to be around, you know? Nice. So that's yeah. why I always try to be is just that person who understands the, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs, we'll get through this, 
Yeah. It'll be all right. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, perfect, perfect way to end. It's been a pleasure. We connected through politic. And, uh, you know, I look forward to continuing uh, the relationship. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, Mike. Thank you for having me. Thanks a bunch.